And again, big round of applause for Gary. Yeah. With another wonderful speech. I think I've learned more about presidents and Toastmasters than I did all throughout my time in school. <laughs> Theodore Roosevelt, now Abraham Lincoln. That could be two reasons. Detroit Public School sucks, or, which is probably the most important reason and a true reason, Ethan didn't tune in and pay attention. <laughs> With that being said, we'll bring up our next speaker, Mr. Paul, giving his icebreaker speech. Paul. All right. I appreciate everyone's time. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 38 years old. I've been married for 14 years. Uh, what's important to me is faith, family, and as far as passions, uh, we love to travel. We've been all over the world. My wife's actually an immigrant from Istanbul. I, I spoke with Gary yesterday. I volunteered for the opportunity. I thought, what am I going to say? He said you could take it in any, any direction. It's a cool phone case, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> it's not sparkling. It's sparkling. So, what I'm not good at is exposing my soft underbelly and talking about myself, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, that's kind of my goal today. So, you know, I'm, I'm up here exposing myself, trying to grow a beard for the first time. Um, you know, we live in a nice house. Thank you. We live in a nice house. I'm, I feel I'm pretty motivated. I enjoy what I do. But we grew up as white trash. We did. And we weren't poor. We weren't rich. We were definitely middle class. Uh, my mom, she's hard of hearing, she's a tomboy, and she had zero control over her two boys, me and my older brother, three years older than me. Of the two kids, I was the bad one. I was always fighting, vandalizing. To me, it was just adventure. I didn't realize I was bad. I didn't realize we were white trash. Um, in fact, my brother and I had a conversation six months ago, and we kind of determined that and just laughed about it. <laughs> um, you know, it is what it is. It's not a good thing, not a bad thing. It just is. Uh, my dad managed a car dealership, and he worked all hours of the day for six days a week. And he'd come home on a Sunday, and if you can imagine being absolutely physically and mentally exhausted, uh, you know, just providing for your family, you go out, you kill it, you drag it home, and then you get one day of rest, and you do that every day. And that's a tough living. And I really didn't appreciate what he did until I got older and actually uh, started working for a living myself. Uh, faith is important. I'll tell you a funny story. The first exposure that I've had to it was a guy named Greg Goldenberg. He was four grades above me. He was a good friend of mine, probably kindergarten through third or fourth grade. And his dad is a Jew. His mom is a Christian. I didn't know what either of those was. And the true story, funny story, I saw a, a bumper sticker that said, my boss is a Jewish carpenter. So I asked my friend, my friend Greg, his dad made cabinets in the garage, that's what he did. So I said, <laughs> I, told, I told my friend about it, and I said, hey, was that one of his employees? And, you know, if you can imagine, it was in front of his parents. <laughs> so I, I just stood there, and they all kind of like, they were silent. And they all kind of stood there and laughed at me. And I said, oh, man, what just happened? I had no idea. So they explained it to me. So that was my first introduction to faith. Uh, like I said, I was a bad kid. You know, I liked to fight. To me, it was all adventure. Uh, I was really good at football. Uh, that was, you know, something that I could always, you know, rely upon and, and kind of get rid of my aggression. And all the way through eighth grade, I was the alpha male in my own head. I was the, you know, King Blank of Blank Mountain, if you've ever heard that term. I was, I was, I was the shit. And then the weekend before ninth grade, I actually had brain surgery. I had a, a, a benign tumor on my cerebellum, which controls motor coordination, which helped me at football because I'd hit someone and I, I'd go right through them. I couldn't stop. Uh, but it also controls hormones as well, hence the aggression. So in my own head, I was at the top of my game. I was the king. And then afterwards, I was humbled. I was broken. It really broke me down. And... Looking back, it was absolutely a new lease on life because I was in the wrong path. Uh, really taught me humility and uh, that I wasn't all that I thought that I was. Uh, moving forward a little bit, I went to college at University of North Texas. That's where I met my wife. This is another good story. Totally true story. It was December of, no, I'm sorry, it was January of 2004. I just had arthroscopic surgery on my knee for the second time, and I was on crutches. 
and it was cold and I had to, to hobble my way to class and you know as a college kid my wife's college instructor was pretty hot and that's the first time I saw her first day of class she helped me up to my desk and I was like man I'd really like to, to you know get to know her make her my girlfriend three months had passed it was April of 2004 I saw her in the computer lab and she was, up, she was an employee there and she was tutoring two girls and I was preparing for another class and I was like well here's my shot and it was just one of those days where you wake up and you just feel good and everything's okay so I figured out oh, why not the answer is always no if you don't try so I walked up to her and I said excuse me I got a, I have a question my name's Paul and can I take you out to dinner and all three of them looked at me like a deer in the headlights <laughs> And if you can imagine, like, oh, crap, you know, you get that sinking feeling in your stomach. And it was probably three seconds, but it felt like forever. And she says, well, I don't know you. And I said, well, that's the point. <laughs> and that's the best thing I ever did. So she wrote down her name and her number. And, and you know, uh, we've been married for 14 years as of October wow. 6th. We've got an eight-year-old girl. Uh, but for me, that's faith. That's the beginning of my family. And then we love to travel. We've been all over the world, so I appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. What a natural, right, Jim? Yeah. Right? <laughs> that was just the.